Shirkus here from Shirkus.com and today I'm really excited to share with you a tutorial for no line water coloring. Now I've tried no line coloring before with markers and other mediums and I just never really got the hang of it and I really struggled with it. Um, but I've been playing a lot with water coloring over the last year. I'm a tad bit obsessed. Um, but it kind of inspired me to try no line coloring with watercolors. And I have found it to be a little bit easier, I believe. Um, and I've definitely been more successful with it. I just love the way that it looks when you're done with your project. I just think it gives a really artsy feel to your images. And it almost looks like you hand drew the images yourself which I just really love that look um, so today I'm going to show you how to um, paint this cute little deer here um, but I had so much fun that I played with some other critters as well the orange is really really fun to play with and then I really love how the bear came out it is a bit tricky when you have a darker image like this um, to get some true lights and darks in the image so I would recommend doing an image like this maybe after you've played with one that's a little bit lighter in color Colors, just as a suggestion but anyway so let's get started I am using party animal which is a lawn fawn set I just think the critters are so cute and I just have a lot of fun coloring them so that's the set I'm gonna be using today but you can use any stamps that you have in your stash and then I'm also using Distress Watercolor Cardstock. Again, you can use any watercolor cardstock that you have in your stash. I just really like the Distress Watercolor Cardstock um, for a couple reasons. One is it's already cut to size, um, four and a quarter by five and a half, and that's just a really convenient size, and I'm a lazy crafter. Um, but two, I also like it because I get the same results with it every time I use it, and that's really important for me. Um, I teach a lot of in-person classes and um, it's really important that my students are going to get the same results as I did um, you know working on the samples um, but you can use any watercolor cardstock again it needs to be watercolor cardstock you can't really just use um, a plain smooth cardstock it won't work as well I'm also using um, Distress inks. Um, again, you can get similar results with dye, any other dye-based ink pads. I like the Distress colors um, because I like the color palette. I love these new mini ones. They sit on my desk in their little storage containers, and I just find them super, super convenient to use. And I also feel that they, because they're reactive with water, um, I get better results with them. So that's what I'm using. And I'm also using, this is just a sheet of cardstock, a half a sheet of cardstock laminated. So I like to use this for my palette. You'll see in just a minute. Um, I know I could use my Ranger craft sheet, which is the surface I have down on my table, but sometimes I like the white surface so I can see the true color. Um, and especially filling a video, I think it's better for you guys to be able to see that. And then lastly, um, just a bucket of water, which is off camera over here, and just a small detailed paintbrush. This is a number two paintbrush, um, and so really any small paintbrush that you have in your stash. Um, it obviously, if you're doing a larger image, you can do a little bit larger brush, um, but you'll see in a little bit, I use this one for all of the detail on my um, stamp, and I just really, really like that. All right, so let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is stamp the image. When you're stamping the image, you want to use a light colored ink pad. This is the trick, this is the secret trick. So you could use tattered rose for distress ink, um, but I tend to like to use antique linen. So I'm just getting that out. So this is just an antique linen ink pad. Um, it's gonna be a very, very light, light brown color, almost like a vanilla. And you'll see that in just a minute when I stamp it. And depending on the watercolor cardstock you're using, you can use the smooth or the rough side. Um, I almost always use the rough side because um, I think it looks artsier, but um, you can obviously use the smooth side as well. 
And I'm just cleaning off my stamp. This is the new Lawn Fawn Stamp Chamois. I'm so excited to have this. No more fuzzies on my stamp from my baby wipes and no more using any, you know, harsh cleaners or anything. So awesome. You just use water with that stamp chamois. So now that I have my image stamped, what I want to do is work on creating my palette of colors that I'm going to use to color my deer in. So I am going to use Vintage Photo. And so all I do is just do a little smush on my transparency, I mean on my um, laminated cardstock. Tea dye, which is just a lighter brown. I'm going to use a little bit of hickory smoke on his hooves and his nose. And then lastly, I'm going to use a little bit of worn lipstick. And I use this just to um, highlight his ears and rosy his cheeks. All right. So again, now I just have my palette here. You can see how the ink just beads up on this laminated piece of cardstock. And this is a great way to just paint, 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 paint. Um, this is actually a ton of ink. I'm not even probably gonna use most of this um, or even a quarter of it. And you guys will see that in just a minute. One other thing I forgot to mention is in my lap, I have this beautiful baker's cloth. Um, this is my artsy cloth. I always keep it in my lap when I'm watercoloring or I'm art journaling or I'm just working on more inky techniques. And I keep it in my lap to clean my hands, but for today's purpose, I'll be using it just to um, dry my brush off a little bit when I don't want it to be so watery. So that's why that is there. So what I'm going to do to get started is I'm going to wet my paintbrush. I'm over off the side here in my paint bucket and I want it to I want to have quite a bit of water on my brush. I'm not going to blot it off or tap it off on the edge. There's quite a bit of water there and what I'm going to do is dab that onto my um, laminated cardstock. So you can kind of see the bead of water. And I'm gonna bring some of this vintage photo into that water. And what this is doing is just diluting the color so it won't be super intense. Um, and what I like to do first is put a base color down on my critter. So I um, just, you know, that actually probably was too much water because I was too busy talking and not paying attention. So again, just a bead of water on my craft, I mean on my um, laminated piece of cardstock, excuse me, and then I'm just going to bring some of that to um, the, be the pool of water. And again, this is just diluting the color. So you can see um, that this is a lot lighter than here when I was just chatting with you guys and not paying attention. So now that I have my little pool of color here, I'm going to go in with my paintbrush and I'm going to start to paint in the deer. And again, this is just adding a base color. One thing I've learned with all my watercoloring um, lately is just to build up layers. Don't think you're going to get it to look exactly the way you want it in one swoop. Excuse me, that was my kitty visiting. Um, so I'm just adding a base color wherever I want the vintage photo. So right now I'm going to avoid his hooves and his antlers and like his face and stuff that will end up being white. So I'm just laying that color down. It's not dark, it's not shaded. Um, there's no dimension or anything like that yet. Okay. And so you can see that my, oh, and his tail. I always forget his tail. You can see that it is pretty pooly. And what I mean by that is there's a lot of pool of water on the surface. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna quickly zap it with my heat tool just to dry it. That's also my other little tip for you guys is anytime your image starts to get too wet, 
um, just zap it with the heat tool because if it's too wet your colors will start to bleed and it'll start to run outside of the lines and you're just you're gonna get frustrated so I just quickly heat set it so now it's not like crisp dry but it's pretty dry and I'm just gonna clean off my brush and this time I am gonna blot it on my baker's cloth in my lap so that it's a wet brush but it's not as wet as before when we did this little um, palette over here and so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go right into the vintage photo and I just lightly drag the tip of my brush in that ink and that way I'm getting it really saturated the tip of it with a lot of intense color and what I'm gonna do now is go in and add wherever I want shadows now I I'm not gonna sit here and tell you where your shadows should be. Um, just have fun with it and just kinda have a little bit of common sense with it. Um, I'm gonna do it the side of his face. I'm gonna do it under his arms because I figure that's gonna leave a shadow under his neck and in the crease of his arms. But again, don't overthink it too, too much. Just have some fun with it. So I'm just laying down the really dark color um, it doesn't have to be filled in all perfectly or anything like that. Even though I know I'm going to put some shadow on his lower part of his body, um, I am only going to concentrate on his head right now because I don't want the inks to dry too much as I get into this blending mode. So there's still a lot of ink on my brush, so I'm going to clean it off because I've laid down where I want my darks to be. I am going to blot it off just so it's not super, super wet. And now I'm going to go in and in between the dark areas and the light areas, I'm going to start to blend out that line. And you can see right away that's going to darken up the light areas. And it's also going to get rid of that harsh line of the shadow that I wanted. Just have to be super gentle with his little ears here. And so you can see right away, it's starting to look dimensional and with shadow, right? So cleaning my brush again, blotting it off so it's not super wet, picking up some intense color here of the vintage photo. And now I'm gonna go up under his neck. I'm gonna go in the crease of his arm and under his arm and bring it down. Okay, clean my brush so that I have a clean brush, blot it off so it's just a little bit of water on there. And then I'm going to start to drag out that color. And this takes practice. Um, you know, the first couple times I did it, I either had too much water or maybe wherever I shadowed it just didn't make sense or work. Um, so stamp a whole bunch of one image and, you know, sit and relax and just play and test it out. Um, don't get frustrated. Just kind of work at it. But, yeah, so now you can see the side of his body is shadowed. All right, so I'm gonna clean my brush, blot it off so it's not super, super wet, and pick up some more intense color to do his other side. Up under his arm, his face, the crease of his arm, and down his side. Clean the brush so that it's clean with water blot it off so it's not super wet and go in and you can see when I go and pull that color it's softening the line and blending it out I just love the way this ends up looking and the more I do it I really do find watercoloring like this just so relaxing um, you can go back in and add layers, dry it, add other colors. It's just really, really fun. All right. 
Now, the top of his head right in here looks a little streaky for me. Um, I didn't blend it out really well, so I'm actually going to go in, clean my brush, get a little bit more dark, lay it down just a little bit, clean my brush again, blot it off, and then drag some of that color out and hopefully that'll help soften the lines a little bit. Yeah, I already can tell that's gonna look a little bit nicer. Now I just want a little bit more dark in his ear over here. Great, so you can see, looks awesome. All right, so now, oh, and I forgot his little tail. See, I told you I always forget his tail. So I'm just laying down a little bit of dark. It's a very small area, so you don't need a lot. Cleaning my brush, and then I'm actually gonna turn the paper so that I can pull this color up towards the top of the tail. Great. I'm just gonna quickly heat set it so I can move on to another color. <clears throat> All right, so working with his antlers, even though they're small, I do want a little bit of dimension to show. So I'm going to take some water on my brush and dab it down on my laminated cardstock and pull some of the tea dye into it. Same thing that we did with the base coat of the deer, I wanna add just a little base coat of his antlers. Now my brush is too wet, I can tell right away. There's too much water on it. So I just blotted it on my baker's cloth and I'm going back in to pick up the watered down color. And so what's great is because we're using this antique linen ink pad, which is a really, really light ink pad, when you go over it, the color actually almost stops right on the line. The line kind of holds it in. But when you go over it with the whatever color you're using, your lines take over the property of that color. So these lines look vintage photo now, right? No longer like this antique linen. And these lines look like tea dye. And that's what's really great um, and magic about using that light ink pad. So now that we have our base color, I'm just going to heat set it. Just so it's not super wet when I go in to add my shadows. And now that I'm ready to do my shadows, I'm gonna clean my brush and blot it off and go in and grab some intense color. So again, I'm just gently swirling the tip of my brush so that it has color just on the tip of it. And lay some of that dark down. Grab a little bit more. So this, there's a lot of water there. See that compared to that? So I am actually gonna zap it just a second. I don't wanna dry it too much because I want the color to move. I'm gonna go in with a clean brush and blend this up. So this is actually good that this happened on camera. They actually didn't shadow very well. So what I'm gonna do is dry this. And I wanna just have a little bit more dimension on his antlers, but what happened because this is so wet, it didn't allow me to blend it up. So I'm actually gonna go in here and grab a little bit of vintage photo on the tip of my brush and then go into the tea dye just because now it's kind of all tea dye, but I still want to have a little bit of dark. And I don't want to start coloring over, so 
clean my brush and blot it off. And then I'm just evening out those lines. Great. So you can see that. So now what I'm going to do before I move on to the gray hickory smoke, I'm going to grab again on the tip of my brush a little bit of this vintage photo. And I'm going to gently draw in some of these lines around the stuff that's staying white. Um, in a little bit, I'm going to do his eye and his mouth, and I do that with the distress marker. Um, so you could do this part with the distress marker, but I again, I kind of like it to look a little bit more organic and watercolory and not so markery. Those are genisms. Whenever I make up words, they're genisms. Okay, so now I have a clean brush and I'm just gonna go right into the hickory smoke here. Um, these areas are way too small for me to be doing any shadowing. So I'm just filling them in. Um, the line of the antique linen will be slightly darker than what's in the center because it's taking on that, that ink on top of it. So that'll kind of give a little bit of shading and dimension, but I'm not gonna go in there. You could, but I'm not. All right. So, oh, and his little nose too. I want to be hickory smoke. All right, so now I'm cleaning my brush, making sure there's quite a bit of water on there, plopping down some, and I'm gonna bring some of this worn lipstick into the mix. You can see what I meant earlier about how we weren't even gonna really use hardly any of this ink. I really should start just tapping a corner of it to my palette. Um, but anyways, that's beside the point. So I'm inking up my, or getting some color on my brush, and I'm going to just dab some of this. I see a droplet on my brush. I'm going to just dab some of this on his ear. It's just worn lipstick with the water on it. Makes a really nice light pink. And then I like to rosy their cheeks. I just think it makes them look so cute. And then I'm going to heat set this. So once I get this heat set, all I need to do is add in the detail to his eyes and his mouth. But look how great it is, how great, you know, farts coming along. And to draw in his eyes and his mouth, I just tend to use the distress marker in Vintage Photo. There's a brush tip and a fine tip, so I'm going to use the fine tip. And just go over the antique linen. And that is that. So you end up having this really cute deer. I did the same exact thing with the party hat and the ice cream. I stamped them in the antique linen and then I colored them in with um, picked raspberry, worn lipstick, and tea dye were the ink pads for the distress inks. And yeah, again, the fox is really fun to do. For this one, I used Wild Honey and Rusty Hinge for his oranges. And then again, the hat is Picked Raspberry and Worn Lipstick. And I think I used a little bit of Festive Berries on the heart here. And then the bear, again, this one's just a bit tricky to get some darks and lights in there since he is all brown, um, but it's fun to play with for sure. And for this one, what I used was, um, I'm trying to remember, I believe I used walnut stain and ground espresso. And then the little bit of tea dye on his um, nozzle there and then worn lipstick on his cheeks and ears so these are super super cute um, they made really quick and simple cards once I got them all watercolored and die cut out and then I just added them to the birthday tags stamp by Lawn Fawn that I cut out with the tag your it die and then this is the Lawn Fawn Mon Ami petite papers that I die cut out with the stitched rectangle 
four bar die just to give a little bit added something. So there you go. I have three birthday cards ready to go. And I hope you guys had a lot of fun learning how to do no line watercoloring with me. Have a great day, you guys. Bye-bye.